Hello fellow compounders. If you joined me last time, we were building a focus portfolio to beat the S&P 500. Remember that my friend did it with 10 stocks and he retired at age 47 with $5 million. It's definitely achievable by owning a handful of good businesses, being disciplined, and having a lot of patience. We reviewed the business owner's mindset and the investment selection process. I gave you a peek into my lifetime portfolio and reviewed the first five positions. Oh, and wasn't that back test amazing? A decade's worth and our first five positions outpaced the S&P 500 by 5.5% annually. In this video, I'll reveal the next seven positions in my lifetime portfolio. To check out the first five positions, here's the link. This video is for educational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice. I am not your financial advisor and you are responsible for your own financial decisions. So let's get started. First, let me list the five initial positions in the portfolio and then we'll continue to the next seven positions. Number one, Berkshire Hathaway, ticker BRKB. Number two, Markel Group, ticker MKL. Stock number three, Alphabet, ticker GOOG or GOOGL. Number four, Danaher Corporation, ticker DHR. Number five, Domino's Pizza, ticker DPZ. At number six, we have Brookfield Corporation, ticker BN. Here's an interesting fact. They've been around for over a century. Brookfield is a global alternative asset manager with over $850 billion in assets under management. It focuses on investing in the backbone of the global economy. Brookfield is known for its diversified portfolio of assets, including real estate, renewable power, infrastructure, and private equity. And recently, they just got in into insurance. It sounds something like Berkshire Hathaway, doesn't it? Given the world's insatiable need for infrastructure and sustainable power, Brookfield is well positioned to capitalize on these trends over the long term. Over the last 20 years, Brookfield has averaged a 19% annual return. They are excellent capital allocators. Management expects to deliver a 17% return on invested capital and generate $45 billion in free cash flow over the next five years. They believe they can continue to compound capital at 15% annually over the long term. Brookfield has a $140 billion in permanent capital that it invests alongside its clients. I like that the CEO, Bruce Flatt, owns about $2 billion in Brookfield BN stock. This is a best of breed alternative asset manager, and I'm sure that they will be around for many decades to come. Number seven, Realty Income Corporation, ticker O. A darling for those who love consistent dividends. They have been often referred to as the monthly dividend company. They've been paying monthly dividends since it was founded in 1969. Realty Income is a member of the S&P 500 Dividend Aristocrats Index. This means that the company has at least 25 years of consecutive annual dividend increases. Realty Income is a consolidator in a highly fragmented net lease market. They invest in retail and commercial real estate. They have over 13 thousand properties under long-term net lease agreements in 85 different industries. Their gross real estate book value portfolio is around $46 billion. Let me take a minute to explain the net lease structure. It works like this. Realty income would buy a property from a business, let's say it's Walgreens, a standalone location of Walgreens. Then it leases it back to Walgreens using a triple net lease. This means that the tenant Walgreens in this case, is responsible for paying all major operating costs of the property, that is property taxes, building insurance, and maintenance. The landlord doesn't have to worry about the variable costs associated with the property ownership. Therefore, Realty Income's business model is very simple. In this example, they buy the property from Walgreens and lease it back to Walgreens at a 6% cap rate. This means that Walgreens pays a net rent equivalent to 6% of the purchase price of the property. Walgreens benefits by converting the asset or their property into cash for more productive uses. Realty Income, on the other side, benefits because Walgreens would pay 60,000 per year in rent, making it a win-win scenario. The leases are usually 10 to 20 years long and have rent escalators pegged to inflation. Realty income would borrow to buy the property. Let's say it borrows at 4% interest. So in effect, realty income would make a 2% spread. That's a 6% rent versus the 4% interest it pays out to the bank. So that's a 2% financial spread. It practically acts like a bank. This is a very good business. The addressable market for triple net leases is estimated to be $4 trillion in the United States and $8 trillion in Europe. 
The public net lease read, reads, which includes realty income, accounts for less than 4% of that addressable market in the United States and less than 1% of the addressable market in Europe. This means that realty income has a long runway to continue growing. I'm very confident that this business will be around 10 years from now. And speaking of future-proof businesses, at number eight, we have Paycom Software, ticker PAYC, an embodiment of how businesses are moving toward cloud-based solutions. With a vast clientele of over 19,000 and a revenue retention rate of over 93%, Paycom stands as a beacon of growth combined with stability. It offers a full-blown HR suite, ensuring Paycom is a fast-growing provider of payroll and human capital management, or HCM software. It targets clients with 50 to 10,000 employees in the United States. Its platform provides functionalities to cover the entire employee lifecycle, ranging from recruitment to retirement. Moving on to number nine. If you enjoy Tom Clancy novels, you will like this business. Lockheed Martin, ticker LMP. Defense might not seem like a growth sector, but it's perennial. Lockheed Martin is the world's largest defense contractor and has dominated the Western market for high-end fighter aircraft since it won the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter program in 2001. Lockheed's largest segment is aeronautics, which derives upwards of two-thirds of its revenue from the F-35. Lockheed's remaining segments are rotary and mission systems, which is mainly Sikorsky helicopter business, missiles and fire control, which creates missiles and missile defense systems, and space systems, which produces satellites and receives equity from the United Launch Alliance, a joint venture. I like this business because it's very stable. Lockheed ensures its dominance through a diversified arsenal of products and innovations. With security challenges evolving globally, Lockheed's role only becomes more vital. There will always be a need for defense. Lockheed Martin has a very healthy return on invested capital, clocking in at 29%. It carries a 2.9% dividend yield, and it has been growing its dividend at 8.4% per year for the past five years. I don't see this company going out of business within my lifetime. And at number 10, we have Calmain Foods, Inc. Ticker C-A-L-M, Calm. If you ever dreamt of owning a farm, this is your chance, in a corporate sense, that is. They are the largest shell egg producer in the United States. Yes, chicken eggs. They have a simple yet robust business model, which makes them a tempting pick for investors. Their product portfolio contains nutritionally enhanced, cage-free, organic, and brown eggs. Calmain Foods markets the shell eggs to a diverse group of customers, including grocery store chains, club stores, and food service distributors. The company's brands are Egglands, Land O' Lakes, Farmhouse, and Four Grain. The company has one operating segment, which is the production, grading, packaging, marketing, and distribution of shell eggs. They hold a dominant position in the staple food market. Calmain was founded in 1957 and produces over 1 billion dozen eggs per year. Yep, you heard it. 1 billion dozens of eggs. It has 21% of the U.S. market. Its dividend policy is to distribute one-third of the quarterly income. So the dividends are highly variable. It's like owning an egg farm. If the farm earns more money, your dividends will be higher. And if it does less, dividends will be lower. Eggs are a commodity, so prices will vary from year to year. Their return on invested capital is 54.8%, and it has no debt. Incredible, no debt. The business is well run and has been in business for over 50 years. I like this business because it's a basic business, easy to understand, and it has no debt. Let me repeat, it has no debt. So they're able to withstand the volatility of the business. This is one business that will be around several decades from now. Now here's a twist. The last two positions are a bit of a default setting. VTI, the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, and VXUS, the Vanguard Total International Stock Market ETF. These indexed ETFs are my go-to options whenever our 10 main businesses seem overpriced. If a position is overpriced, its allocation will go to one of the index ETFs instead. It's all about balance. So there you have it, folks, my complete lifetime portfolio. Always remember, investing isn't just about numbers. It's about understanding businesses, having patience, and building a future. Until next time, see you in the next video. Keep compounding. Take care.